Well, still on the breakfast plus TV Africa, uh, thank you for staying with us so much. We have Eziko Yaitug who joins the conversation this morning. Eziko, uh, compliment of the season. Happy New Year to be precise. <laughs> Very same to you. Happy 2023. To all those that said we will not be here, too bad for them we're here. <laughs> yes, we're definitely we're here. Uh, let's start off with the papers this morning. And uh, we would like to take a quick look at uh, one of the papers that's been made available by our paper vendor. Uh, we'll be looking at the Daily Trust newspaper. On the Daily Trust newspaper, uh, the headline says, State Federal... FCT to spend over 11.5 trillion naira in 2023. Projections barely, you know, an annual rituals, that's what Esparta say. Banks orders must be weary granting loans to outgoing governors. And that's also a picture of unprecedented crowd that shut down Kano for the state APC presidential rally. You could see a picture as well, but at some point it, it, it looks as if these pictures are photoshopped, right? When you look at it, to some extent, I really don't know why uh, people do these things, but you know, we we have to be very honest as a people. Uh, let's quickly turn our attention from the Daily Trust. We have the Nation newspaper uh, also in front of us. Tinubu Shatima APC chiefs shut down Kano, and there's also a pictorial representation to that on the front page of the Nation. Ex Lagos governor promises to serve Nigerians progressive uh, Nigerians. Progressive governors will deliver at polls, says uh, Baguda. Now, away from that, Central Bank of Nigeria says the 1.35 trillion naira Polaris Bank sales must be competitive. It's a competitive offer, by the way. And another caption says government targets 8.2 trillion naira from non oil sector. It would really be great because as much as we make all of these projections on, pep on paper, most times we're still very dependent on paper. WK confident of victory for his preferred presidential candidate. And Air Force redeploys uh, the branch chief, AOC's uh, NDDC barred from awarding contract above limit. These are some of the headlines you find this morning on the Nation newspaper. The next paper we have is The Punch. The Punch says, Disco hike electricity tariff secretly and consumers kick. So whatever is done in secret uh, cannot be hidden for too long. The people will know. That's why the consumers are kicking. Consumers accuse this cause of uh, hike and operators, N-E-R-C, silent. You also have Disco's beginning new tariff January the 1st. The order arbitrary increment. I find out who's saying all of that, but these are some of the concerns that you have underneath the right and right there. NNPC prospect for oil in Nigeria and Borneo. Uh, NNPC prospects for oil in Nigeria and Borneo. I mean, some people will say, should we be celebrating about this, especially when we look at the oil sector, uh, how far have we fed, what has gone on with the discovery of oil and the prospects? Oh, lot. Uh, what can we say about it? Niger's debt to hit 77 trillion naira loan, servicing GOB 5.2 trillion. 25 buyers invited for the Polaris Bank sale. That's what the CBN is saying. Uh, again, I don't understand why Arsenal's killed my brother, wife, son. Uh, that unfortunate incident that happened, CBN Walker's sibling is quoted to say. And the, the 2023 elections, election INEX sets aside 8,809 uh, beavers as backup, quite commendable. Fuel marketers boycott private depots and uh, 274, or it's, uh, let's look at it closely, 274 trillion naira security budget low, uh, reps panel is saying. The Guardian is the paper we have next. The Guardian says debt servicing gobs 80.6% of the 2022 revenue. Federal government six fresh 8.8 .8 trillion naira loans. Lawmakers orders uh, to take home 228.1 billion. It's been dominating the papers yesterday. We talked about it on the show. Federal government to fund 553.46 uh, billion naira budget gap with spectrum fees. 
maritime tax security to go up 13.4 percent of total expenditure outlay education allocation increased from 5.4 percent to 8.2 percent only 1.88 billion released for capital projects as at november government not doing enough to generate income says expert these are the writers you find this morning and uh, petrol petroleum tanker drivers threaten nationwide strike okay uh, Nigeria records 35 fresh COVID-19 cases uh, as much as uh, there's been different reports from different quarters. But these are some of the headlines we we'll take this morning. Ezekiel and Yaito, uh, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you again. Then uh, let's get straight to the crux of the matter. There are several interesting uh, headlines. But let's look at the issue of revenue for Nigeria and the country. Uh, debt servicing gulps 80.6 percent of the 2022 revenue federal government seeks fresh 8.8 .8 trillion naira's loan and uh, we also know that the lawmakers have allocated 228.8 billion away from the 59 billion naira that's been allocated so there's been a kick even despite the fact that we're struggling uh you know with revenue for our country that's on the guardian newspaper yeah um, thanks again. You know, last week we were like um, playing with figures and um, wondering where the missing link was and everything. I did go back to look at the budget and the missing link was the debt servicing because we're trying to add up you know, the capital, the recurrent, and it didn't meet up to the, the 21 billion, 21 point something billion. The difference was in debt servicing. And um, I don't know how many of us really, I mean, for someone like myself that is running for the governorship of a state, when you look at the budget, one of the very, very critical areas that bothers me no end is the debt profile of the state. And if people understand, you see, there's the debt that we borrow, they are shrouded in so much mystery that we don't really know the terms and conditions we don't know the conditionalities attached to this debt. And if you come to a state level, and maybe, and of course, not even maybe, there's going to be an ISPO attached to it, and you may not be able to reschedule it at any point. You may realize that you, your projected income of about, uh, say, 20 billion, you may discover that about three, four billion is going to be going on a monthly basis to debt servicing. That means that when you now have your capital and recurrent and you put it together, then you have nothing left for, uh, for or rather, where you take your, your recurrent, uh, where you have the salaries and wages and running of government, you may discover that there's nothing left for capital. And because what you projected to be for capital is now going into debt servicing. So the issue of debt servicing is something that every Nigerian, every state government at the federal and at the subnational levels should take really, really serious. This issue of just borrowing, 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 you are putting the country or your state in a situation where they may not be able, they may be crippled, you know, not even for the next generation, but even for the present generation, for the incoming administration. I think that Nigerians should wake up and make sure that one of the most important considerations, one of the prime considerations, is how 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 concerned the, the, the presidential candidate or the governorship candidate is about the issue of debt and what the person wants to do concerning it. In our case, we didn't have any option than to say number one, change the music, and number two, go low profile. Because Unless you change your test board from that consumption of we can't have a, a private jet attached to the government again, we can't have this concept of government house that is taking so much money. There are many things you've got to cut the worst stages because the music has changed. There's no more money. And this has to apply at the national level and at the subnational levels. We need to be very, very careful about the character the personality, the mindset of the person that we want to bring into government. When you see, let me be a little more specific. One of the things that has endeared Mr. Peter Obi to a lot of people is this aspect of feeling that, look, public funds 
must have a, a certain conscience about it where you must manage it in a way that must bring dividends to the people and this should be the mindset of anybody seeking any public office it's not about your personal ego it's not about yourself because the dead body in nigeria all the state we must have a very serious conversation around it even also okay look at the nationals these chinese loans that we are taking up and down there's been a lot of speculation that they are tied to national assets why can't the, the national assembly look into that allegation or assertion or uh, what do you call it uh, uh maybe conspiracy theory is it a fact and if it is which national assets are our debt tied to are we going to wake up one morning and discover that i don't even know maybe the the, the, the villa is in con is being controlled by another government or wake up and discover that nnpc has been taken over by another government or wake up and discover that you know some very very strategic you know investments that we've made over the years are now under the control i don't want to even talk about the place they said they took over the police i mean i mean that's absurd that's ridiculous that is unthinkable you know unfathomable so this issue of debt i will say it again and again nigerians should wake up and smell the coffee the person that wants to be your president what's his mindset with respect to how you spend money where you spend money prioritization and if you look from you know uh, in our language they say they don't get a bit but that you learn death from sleep the campaigning structure the way they spend money the approach to things does it show people who are going to be extremely uh, spendthrift or those who are going to be very frugal with money or those who are i mean what's the mindset because who you have today is the person that is going to run your life for the next four if not eight years uh, ezekiel let's uh, move away from the garden newspaper and turn our attention to the punch because uh, nigeria is the country is where we're still talking about the issue of revenue revenue is a major issue for us and that's because we have not been able you know, to convert uh, all that's around us, you know, to uh, a reality and make it, you know, tangible. However, the Daily Trust reports that 36 states government and the federal capital territory have proposed to spend over 11.5 trillion naira in a 2023 fiscal year. Of course, we're already in 2023. Now, uh, fourth analysis shows that, uh, you know, 6.482 trillion naira will be spent on capital projects, while 4.989 trillion will be spent on recurrent capital. And you know that we have been very big, uh, you know, on the issue of allocation, how much we allocate to capital projects and how much we use to run the cost of governance. Now, this is uh, a holistic analysis. You think that 2023 is really going to be a happy year for us? In some states, actually, not entirely. <laughs> I'll tell you this, there's a mindset that I've tried very hard to talk about and enlighten people. The sort of democracy that we run is such that the office of the chief executive, whether the president or the governor, the third tier is just there in principles. The, the, the local government, they really don't, they are the appendages of the state government. Between these two people, the mindset of the person is so crucial because they have such overwhelming powers that they can literally do or undo. When the Bible says that when the righteous is on the throne, the people rejoice, it's just a typical case of Nigeria. We've got to know that the person that we bring into power, the person that we support, it's a sowing and reaping principle. Those of us that have the mindset of, ah, make I collect my own this time, or going to collect, going to collect, know that it is your reaping season and that you are going to be sowing for the next four years. Why would you reap for two months and sow for four years? It's nonsensical. It makes more sense for you to think of a person you are going to support you are going to sow. You are going to help. He doesn't have, but he knows. 
He doesn't have the money, but he has the spirit. He has the mind. He has the exposure. He has what I need to manage this country or this state for the next four to eight years. So you support that person. On the 29th of, of May, that person comes to power. And then you can relax for four years because you have elected a competent, capable person with character and love above all. Love for country or for state. You realize that there will be a new spirit that galvanizes every single person. We start to walk towards a common goal, and that will be the beginning of our emancipation. For people who have seen people that are completely, you know, disenfranchised, not disenfranchised, they, they, are, they are not in a position to be able to do the rigors of the job. And you are following the person because he has money. The problem is not the person because everybody has a right to aspire. The problem is you. That you know this person is not competent to handle this job. You are following the person as if a spell has been cast on you. As a matter of fact, in our last radio program, we have to spend our time praying for this covering cast, the spell that comes on intelligent, articulate people during election. And then but, suddenly leave them after election. But um, uh, Ezekiel Yaitok, is it not worrisome that out of this state, as much as we're talking about the 2023 uh, you know, budget. There's only 20 states out of 36 uh, that has, you know, gone ahead to uh, pass into law what they intend to spend for 2023. And so you have the remaining states. Is it not worrisome? How will they be, you know, running the states at this point in time? Uh, it's not budgeted for because I'm sure that the budget cycle had already been expired, except there's a different budget cycle they might be running on. I'll tell you, it comes to the same thing I say all the time, almost sounding like a broken record. When you expect a dog to meow or a cat to bark, the problem is not with the dog or with the cat. The problem is with you that should know better. These people have never been interested in governance. They have only been interested in state capture the treasury. So a little important, not little, such a fundamental thing as the budget that should be a very, very serious consideration for any state governor. You realize that this, these charlatans are still monkeying with it. All their own is politics, politics, my successor, my successor, because if you look at those states, virtually all of them are people who are like doing their second term, completing their second term. So they are busy with what am I going to take? How am I going to take it? What do I do? What can I delay so that I can do this and do that? And not how can my state be properly run? It's worrisome, like you said, extremely worrisome. But I think that there are eye openers to us for us to think in terms of the sort of people that we are going to bring in into governance by next dispensation, which is just a few weeks away. Well, let's see how all of that pans out. And the next question will be because, I mean, this report and this conversation is uh, such that we should, you know, have over time, over and over again. Uh, because in order to see some of the states that have, you know, put out their budget, have passed it and what have you, just a few of them have stated how they intend to fund the budget. Most of them have not stated the how they intend to, uh, you know, sub, um, fund this budget just only to be dependent on what comes from the uh, allocation, the federal allocation. And now we know that, you know, what's coming into the federal allocation is not so big because of the challenges that we have. So uh, is it not time that we, we tell ourselves the truth and, you know, begin to decentralize power and allow states to begin to think outside of the box? Maybe the states are becoming very lazy just because they have to depend on an allocation that comes from the center. Two things. Yesterday, um, in Akwaibom State, the Council of Elders made up of past governors and their deputies, past uh, ministers, you know, the, the attorneys general and things like that, they came together and called all of us that want to be governors and said, talk to us. They did not allow any other person coming, strictly the Council of Elders. 
And I think at the end of the day, the jury were, was out there because luckily for us, they live streamed it. The only problem that some of us had was that I wish they had more time to do more drill down to specifics so that you can tell us how you want to get the resources to fund these phantom projects, this fantasy that you have in your head. But I think that the little time we had, we could tell who was ready for governance and who was just thinking, uh, let me just go and collect the money and share. Okay? So what am I saying? I think people should start to drill down the professionals in every state get yourselves together don't be in a hurry to endorse anybody drill every single person on the house how 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 i want to create jobs how I, I want to be able to fund this project how give us specifics on how you want to do all these things youth unemployment restiveness tell us specifics security your finances tell us specifics so I think that the best we can do now is to tell all this, whether you are or Haneze, the different different groups, or you know, whichever whichever you are, call all your candidates, drill them now, put them to debate. I'm surprised that some people don't want to open themselves up to debate. Like in Aquaibon, one of the people that said he's a frontline person, come and let us talk. Let's take you on one on one. Let's know what you have because it's what is between your ears that we need, not how much deep your pocket is. That's absolute balderdash. Come and face the public. Tell them who you are, what you want to do, and how you want to do what you want to do. That is what should give the public the inspiration to line up behind you and not to go on vote buying, using the resources of the people, and God is watching. All right, then, the Guardian newspaper, uh, this issue is about COVID, and we know that there's been a lot of concern in China. The, you know, Center for Disease Control in Nigeria has reassured that uh, we haven't recorded, I mean, that was, you know, some kind of report that we have not recorded anything. I mean, there's nothing to be scared of or worried about. However, uh, there's also a recent report saying that Nigeria records about 35 fresh COVID-19 cases. And the foreign airlines have also kicked, faulting the return of ineffective COVID-19 protocols, uh, travel protocols. We know that it's not just Nigeria. I think Nigeria was following the lead, you know, following what was going on globally. Because even in the United Kingdom and amongst other uh, countries, they had relaxed uh, travel protocol. They have res relaxed, you know, the COVID-19 protocols, wearing of uh, no masks in public and what have you. So uh, we're here again. Uh, and should we be worried, especially when we're itching closer to, we're getting closer to the 2023 elections? That's in November, 2023 is here already. It sounds like we're in 2022. When we're very close to the elections, how many more weeks, uh, how many more days before the elections in February? So should we be, should we be worried now? I, I think um, INET should use this opportunity to... Um, um, happen what I have always, always, always um, advocated. Play down on the rallies where you say next to nothing, where you spend so much money. Do more of town hall and debate. Play down on the rallies because the, the, the folly of the rally has been exposed. These are people that, I mean, look at the last election, you know, the cycle. When Atiku entered Kano, it was wow. It was like, like a tsunami. It was as if he had taken over the whole state. But during election, how many votes came out? It was an anticlimax. So Nigerians should refuse to be impressed by these rallies where you pay people humongous amount of money, pay them, and bring all sorts of... It's called mobilization. We all know... It's a, a silly trick that by today we should be tired of. It's a simple thing. Um, get the people, bring me 20 buses from this place, 20 from this place, 20, you, they pay them. And they people like, hey, come on, where did they go? Uh, how much? Uh, two, 2,000. Bam, everybody will just jump in. Boom, boom, boom. They come and empty in the space. 
and watch the people that are there. They are just milling around because as far as they are concerned, they just came here on a contract, pay me my money, I go my way, I don't get a problem, you don't get a problem. You understand? So is that is that campaigning? Is that what INET should should see? The people people should put up record of their campaigns. Look, in a quiet bomb, I keep saying this. I've been to 28 out of 31 local governments where I can give you the report from every village. Village, not word. Recorded by, I went with NTA crew for weeks span. We were doing three hours in every local government, especially selected people, strictly by invitation, to cover every village. And we sat down and hear the problems of every village. I doubt that any other candidate in this country can say that. That is about somebody that has a heart that wants to work for the state and not the rallies and the jamborees where you say next to nothing. They ask me one-on-one -on -one questions. I listen to them and I get on record the problem of virtually every village. Three hours sitting down, listening. You say, you could depend on how many words. They say there are 11 words. Okay, word one. How many villages? There are four villages, <laughs> right? Who is from this village? They come. What are your problem? Your name, your word, your problems, and then, um, of course, no, your name. No, but your um, Ezekiel, yes, your problem. Yeah, yes. I took. My, yes. my concern here is do you see us getting to a point where we feel that all that's happening in China will affect us? We're in January already, and February uh, is just around the corner. And so we get to a point where, you know, uh, we begin to record cases, and then there's a need for us to go back to status quo, where we, where we came from, you know, from 2020, thereabout. And you know that uh, I, I really don't know. It's the elections. So do you see us getting to that point where... You see, yes, every question is relevant to the context and the essence. The problem is um, COVID-19. The context is the situation we are in now, which is political error. So the relevant answer is what I'm giving you. Limit the people, limit the spaces. Contain yourself within town hall meetings and not these crowds that you achieve nothing, you spend all the money, and then there's a higher risk of a spread of any disease. So I was giving context to the essence of the question. If not says, oh, blah, 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 the other will just be not talking, not, but practically, political error is people gathering. Can we limit the people through a simple policy? Guys, please play down on the rallies, maybe have an opening rally, maybe close it and the, do a closing rally, but the rest of the time, do more of town halls, do more of debate, do more of door to door, so that we don't have these mega crowds gathering, achieving nothing, and yet risking the lives of the people. That's within the context that I was trying, giving my answers. Okay, and, and just as we close this down, uh, yeah, I took, there's also another report from uh, the Punch newspaper that discos have hiked electricity tariff secretly and consumers have kicked. How, how do you describe this? Would you say that this is... You know, I, I, some sort you know, of robbery? You know, yeah, when you buy 10,000 Naira um, credit and you load it on your meter, everybody has known how many units it gives you. So the next time you buy, assuming it gives you 228 units, the next time you buy and load and you discover that instead of 228, you are getting 180 you know that something has happened. So you can't hike things secretly, you know? The issue is, what is the Consumer Protection Agency doing? Who do we report these matters to? What should the processes be? Have we come to a point where enter the filling station, any price you see, you buy? But you see, that is on petrol. But on this, we have a monopoly where the PHCN are the only people that can give you this credit and this power. And if they choose to just take it above your roof, and we need the power, is there any law? Is there anybody? Is there any reprieve? Is there anything we can go to? It's not like 
MTN and this other maybe uh, Tisalat or any of this that if the price is high here, you go to the other one. If it's not in this network, you go to that network. In this power matter, we have only one network, which is PHCN. And the federal government has to come and let us know what the understanding is. I've had to have, have a very serious dialogue with the boss, the chairman, you know. And there is a certain lie that we tell ourselves, and we need to have a government that is honest. What is the lie? You can't produce something for five naira and sell it for four naira. It doesn't make sense. If you produce it for five naira, and I government, I want you to sell it for four naira, it means that I am going to come to you and give you the differential of one naira, then plus your profit, a reasonable profit, reasonable markup. On the other hand, if you produce it for five naira and you want to sell it for ten naira, I'll tell you as a government, you can't do that. That profit margin is too much. You are putting the load on my people. The question is, as at today, what is the cost reflective tariff for a unit of power that we consume? What is it? Why is it don't, it's just like the mystery of the barrels of oil. What is the imported cost of a barrel of petrol? You know, a liter of petrol. What's what why can't we just labor come in and give us those 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 statistics so that we all know if as a nigerian i know that the cost of bringing fuel in is 200 naira i know that for a fact is not disputable then the person wants to sell it for 210 naira i'll say it makes sense yes, okay, yeah, when I, I don't know yes go ahead just just finish up with so that we don't thoughts. really know what the cost reflective tariff of this power is we need to know. Number two, we need to know whether there is any subsidy on it. Federal government cannot subsidize everything. Power will subsidize. Fuel will sub they don't have the money. They are borrowing. They are broke. Come down. Tell Nigerians, sorry, no vets. We don't get money again. Cost of bringing fuel in is 200 naira. We've begged them to just peg it, make just five naira profit on it. We've oh. brought down the tariffs at the port so that they can now make. So please. This 205 naira, Nigerians will buy it. Yes. Cost of cost reflected tariff of this of power is, say, 10 uh, naira. Please is, accept to buy it at 12 naira. Is Once it's yeah, okay. clean, Nigerians will deal with it. Yes, please. Let, let's leave it at, at, at this point uh, because we need to connect with our next guest uh, for the next conversation. We appreciate your time uh, so much and have yourself a wonderful 2023. Same to you and the whole of the management of Plus TV Africa. All right, then. Ezekiel uh, Nyaito is a public affairs analyst. He joins us every other time on Off the Press. We take a break when we return. We'll be looking at a second major conversation. Uh, please stay with us. Quite interesting.